When differentiating between an igneous sill versus a sedimentary horizontal layer while looking at a stratigraphic column, you'll need to figure out what rock type each layer is. When we're doing our worksheets in class, we're going to have black and white or grayscale images. That adds a complication as compared to looking to a colored uh, block model or a, a colored geologic map that helps you to find the key more easily or helps you to more readily see the texture and imply or infer the rock type from that texture. But on a black and white scale, we'll have to look for the pattern to determine if something is an igneous or a sedimentary rock. This is also important for if you're trying to figure out what type of unconformity you have. The unconformity video is next, so don't worry if you don't know what that is. But when you're looking at layers and you're trying to figure out if a horizontal layer or an intrusion is going to be an igneous material versus sedimentary, you need to look at the composition. The sedimentary has some pretty obvious keys. The swatches or patterns that are used in stratigraphic columns are held pretty uniform and constant. If you are to look at PDFs on the USGS website, you can find example patterns for many, many established rock types. Here we have the common key or symbol for limestone. This one you could probably guess is sandstone. This one with its platy layers is a shale. Here we have a conglomerate because we have sandstone and larger grains within it. And this would be a shale that is rich in fossils. So our sedimentary rocks that you'll encounter most will be like the shale, like our limestone, sandstone, and you'll sometimes see the conglomerate. Things that are fossil rich won't be showing up in our lab activities very much. When you're looking at those layers and knowing that those are sedimentary, you now want to pay close attention to how they're interacting with layers that represent either metamorphic activity or metamorphic material or igneous material. The metamorphic and igneous um, lithologic keys aren't going to be as recognizable as the sedimentary ones are. The igneous instead exhibit more of a chaotic pattern where you have random squiggles, looks like sprinkles, sprinkles and dots, X's, X's and dots. And what these are meant to represent would be the crystals that you find in igneous material. Here would be something that might represent nice for a metamorphic rock. But what's more important for the igneous or metamorphic material is looking to see whether or not it is present for igneous, looking for those more chaotic patterns that are the X's or the, uh, the sprinkles or the sprinkles and dots, looking for those and seeing whether or not you have intruded material. Many of the examples would be far more obvious because you'll have a different orientation for the sills and dikes. Or you can have it being labeled simply as an intrusion or as a pluton or block of material. And you see in there, that you have all the little um, dots and sprinkles as the infill pattern representing igneous material. If you can't tell if the igneous material came in after the sedimentary material was there, you can sometimes look for what's referred to as baked contacts. Baked contacts are the result of heat metamorphism on the existing rocks. So on a black and white or gray scale stratigraphic column, you will see X's along the boundary of the sedimentary layer signifying that that is metamorphosed, thereby creating a baked contact. That will tell you whether or not the igneous material was hot when the next layer came down upon that. You'll see an example exactly like that in your lab material. You'll see layers of sediment and an intruded, uh, chaotic infill igneous material, and all around the edges of it, you'll find the baked contact X's, and that will tell you that even though there's horizontal layers on top of that igneous material, they weren't necessarily deposited on top of cool material. Instead, they were already there, the igneous material came up, and whilst it was still hot, it metamorphosed the surrounding rocks. If you're looking at a um, colorized version, rather than the X's, you may see a green sheen along the lithology uh, boundary to indicate metamorphism in that case. So look to rock type to determine whether or not something is an igneous sill versus a sedimentary horizontal layer. And it can also help you to infer what kind of unconformities you're looking at.